What's up everybody? So in this video I'm going to talk about hybridization and to be specific I'm going to talk about SP cubed, SP squared, and SP hybridization. So let's get into it. Well what is hybridization? Uh, hybridization is when atomic orbitals combine to form hybrid orbitals. So in order to really understand, to grasp a good understanding of what hybridization is and how it works, you have to know a thing or two about S and P orbitals already. So to review briefly, if we look at the S orbital, it's the lowest energy orbital in any electron shell, and it's spherical. It looks, you know, something like that. And once we get to the p orbitals, however, that's when it becomes a little more interesting. There are three p orbitals, px, py, and pz, and you can see that they are perpendicular with respect to another, to one another. Each one lies upon an axis, x, y, and z. So now that you know, you know a thing or two. Now that we've reviewed a little bit on what these orbitals look like, uh, let's sort of get into how they combine to form hybrid orbitals. Now, I'm going to go through each hybridization individually, and uh, I'm going to start with sp cubed, and I'm going to choose carbon for all three of the hybridizations. And the reason why I've chosen carbon is because carbon is capable of all three hybridizations, sp cubed, sp squared, and sp. Not all atoms can do that. In fact, I think carbon is actually unique in its ability to do that. So, okay. Let's look at the sp cubed hybridized carbon. Each of these little red lobes here represents one sp cubed orbital. And the sp cubed orbitals are combined using one s orbital and three p orbitals. They combine to make four sp cubed hybrid orbitals. So that's pretty straightforward. It's a little more interesting when we start looking at an sp2 hybridized carbon atom. Now imagine that instead of an s orbital combining with three p orbitals as we did in the sp cubed hybridized carbon, imagine if the s orbital combined with two of those p orbitals and left the other p orbital, remember because there's three p orbitals total. So imagine if the one s orbital combined with two of the p orbitals and then left the other one alone. This is called sp squared hybridization. Each of these red lobes represents one sp squared hybrid orbital. This whole blue peanut shaped thing, both of these lobes together represent the p orbital that's actually left alone and not hybridized. So you have sp squared here, sp squared here, and sp squared here, and then this whole thing is a single p orbital. So this is what an sp squared hybridized carbon looks like. Those aren't the only two ways that orbitals can hybridize. Imagine if the s orbital combines with only one of the p orbitals and then leaves the other two p orbitals alone. This is what we call sp hybridization. Each of these red lobes represents one sp hybridized, sp hybrid orbital. This whole peanut shaped thing here represents a p orbital that's been left alone, and this thing here, this blue peanut shaped thing here, which is perpendicular to this one, also represents one p orbital. So we have two p orbitals, and then we also have two hybrid, sp hybrid orbitals. So how to determine hybridization around any atom? Well, it's actually easier than you might think. What you need to do is you need to count the regions of high electron density. And what do I mean by regions of high electron density? Well, I'm talking about a lone pair 
or a bond, whether it's you know single, double, triple, it doesn't matter. So in other words, this lone pair, this single bond, and this triple bond all count as one region of high electron density. So for the purposes of, of uh, hybridization, this triple bond here is sort of, it, you can imagine it as equivalent to this single bond here. They both count as one region of high electron density. So this is no more of a region of high electron density than this for the purposes of, of hybridization. So if there are four regions of high electron density around the atom, then that atom is sp cubed hybridized. If there are three, then it's sp squared hybridized. And if there are two, it is sp hybridized. So let's go through a couple of examples. Here we have methane, CH4. What is the hybridization around the carbon atom? Well, all you have to do is just count the number of regions of high electron density. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four regions of high electron density. And if there are four regions of high electron density, then we can conclude that this carbon atom is sp cubed hybridized. Pretty easy. Let's go through another one. Here we have water, H2O. What is the hybridization on the oxygen atom? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to count the number of regions of high electron density. We have one here, we have one here. Each of the lone pairs counts as one, so we have one here and one here. So that, that means we have four regions of high electron density. So just as the carbon and methane was sp cubed hybridized, the oxygen atom in water is also sp cubed hybridized. Let's move on to another. What is the hybridization of the carbon atoms in this molecule? This molecule is actually called acetylene. It's also called ethyne, but um, that's not really too important right now. Anyway, what's the hybridization on the carbon atoms? Well, looking at these carbons, it looks like this carbon is equivalent to this carbon. So the hybridization on this one ought to be the hybridization on this one, too. They, they both ought to have the same hybridization. And you'd be correct in assuming that. So let's count the number of regions of high electron density around like this carbon. Well, we have one here, this bond, and then we have another one here, this triple bond. There are two regions of high electron density, so we can conclude that the hybridization on each of these carbons, each of these carbons is sp hybridized. Uh, let's go through one more. Here we have formaldehyde. Now, what is the hybridization on the carbon atom in formaldehyde? Same thing. Count the number of regions of high electron density. One here, one here, one here. We have three regions of high electron density. That means that the carbon in formaldehyde is sp squared hybridized. So. Hopefully this video has shed some light a little bit on hybridization and how to determine the hybridization on any atom. So uh, good luck.